I had a phone call from someone who said, I think she said, you've got lung cancer, we need to check you further. And it was a body blow that left me in shock for months. And I found it hard to process anything after that. I've been very lucky with my health. I had my tonsils out when I was seven and had a baby when I was 39 and otherwise haven't troubled hospitals at all. So I thought I was really well. And then one morning I coughed up blood and it was such a shock. And I went to see a doctor that I know she couldn't tell me anything, but she sent me for a chest X-ray. And after that, everything just went into a blur of tests and go there, go there, do this, have a CT scan, an MRI or whatever. It was all completely overwhelming. I think going through these tests was particularly difficult because it was the period of COVID. I couldn't talk to anybody. It was, I don't have anyone at home. You know, I could have come with a hug. <laughs> so I had all these tests. I didn't know what they were for. I went to the Kingston Hospital, it was, for somebody to tell me that it was definitely lung cancer, that it was stage four. That means it's spread to other parts of your body, but I didn't know what stage four meant. It wasn't just lungs, it was in my adrenals, my liver and my bones. That really was dark. I really thought on November the 29th that that meant I was going to be dead by June. I wouldn't see my grandson grow up. He was seven months at that point and it was really horrible. And that shock probably lasted until the April after that. So it was a very strange time of my life. They told me about um, chemotherapy and radiotherapy and gave me documents to read, take away with me. Um, but they said that there was further testing that they could do. They said it was in my lymph node or something in the neck, so they gave me a, I think it's called a biopsy of that. And I'd also had a bronchoscopy. Um, I think they took some, a sample from that too. So a week later, I went back to see the consultant and she'd had the results which indicated that there was a variant that they could target and I think it's called ROS1 and I, that would just be pills and I thought oh wow <laughs> and those pills should target the cancer and they did. <laughs> I feel so grateful that I have this special therapy, which probably wouldn't have been available to so many people who've gone before me with this diagnosis. The tablets I can take at home so not having to go to hospital, not losing my hair was quite important. Those pills transformed my life. It's given me a longer life expectancy. And thank you to all the people who found them, who work on them.